both of these players are phenomenal with Landon being 5-0 and and Elijah bare, um, kind of climbing his way up into the top eight. Really? How about that? <laughs> Apparently the Dark Patch is the most meta card out there. I would not have known that. I played neither, the video game. Neither do I. I mean, I, I, I've i got a little bit of the trading card game, but not so much. Yeah, if it's not Flutter or Ogre Pond or Incineroar, then I don't know what's meta. <laughs> exactly. But speaking of meta, we got to talk about the meta for this midseason showdown because our top Pokemon usage, if you would have shown it to me that Raging Bolt was the number one Pokemon at this midseason showdown, would you have believed me? No, I would not. Especially since, you know, in I think in the past region, the, the regional in Germany, Incineroar was top there, like number one on the seat. So, like, I'm very surprised we're seeing Raging Bolt in here, like, overall the highest usage of this entire MSS. Exactly. And, again, you said it with Incineroar. I mean, ever since the cat came back, like, everybody was talking about it when Hisuian Arcanine was going through it in regulation. He, oh, Arcanine is going to dethrone Incineroar. Incineroar is gone. Incineroar is gone. <laughs> and uh, I I'm looking at this... Uh, I'm looking at these top 12. Um, it's eighth. I, I, I see an Incineroar. I don't see a Hisuian Arcanine. And we saw Hisuian Arcanine mm -hmm. at this midseason showdown. Really? Yeah. I mean, it, it's to be fair, Hisuian Arcanine versus um, Incineroar are just so vaguely different. It's just more, it's, Hisuian Arcanine's more aggressive. You can have the Intimidate off, but with the Choice Band, it's just allowing it to do so much damage compared to Incineroar that could either pivot, do fake out pressure, and just overall just be an annoyance to, your to the opposing side. Exactly. And then we look at it, but again, Another shocker, Fluttermane. Fluttermane's not number one. That's it's, that's it, impressive, I'll it, be honest. It's amazing how Fluttermane is that far down behind Raging Bolt. And, uh, but honestly, Jonathan, when we look at our bracket here for the top cut, we're going to see a good amount of these Pokemon, I think. Mm -hmm. But we have some incredible trainers here. We've got one undefeated trainer five trainers that went X1 and two X2s in this battle, in this turn. And one of our X2s is going to be on stream. We're going to be having Landon Morgel and Elijah Tatum. I'm honestly very excited to see both of these players play out. As Elijah was actually my first round one opponent. Um, I lost, obviously, because, you know, <laughs> he would not be here if, you know, if he didn't if he didn't beat me but i would like to say i was a part of his journey getting up to this top eight but now we can see both of the players on stream and we can talk about the teams actually for a fact because this this is going to be a very interesting mat uh matchup it definitely is going to be an interesting matchup here let's start naturally with our number eight seed in elijah tatum because this is one of the coolest looking teams that i have seen all day i mean you said it first off the sneezer and it's poison touch normally you see unburdened with like a Rillaboom for grassy terrain or an Indeedee with psychic terrain to get the seed activation and then unburden and just go to town with like acrobatics mm -hmm. and everything like that. But then you add in the Sylveon with Terra Blast Steel. Don't usually see Terra Blast Steel on Sylveon unless it's going to be like a choice specs variety. But then you also look at the Urshifu single strike. Okay, makes sense. Urshifu single strike. Choice Scarf is a unique one on single strike. You don't really see Scarf Dark Urshi, you see Scarf, Rapid Urshi. Or most of the time, just the basic Focus Sash with the max speed and the max attack, because it's basically not it's meant to live like one attack and that's it. But with the Choice Scarf, it actually causes a lot more pressure, because it kind of throws you off guard and you have to play a little bit more defensive going into it, because it will outspeed you unless you don't have a Mon that outspeeds it. Exactly. And meanwhile, we look at our number one trainer in this tournament, Landon Morshaw. He went 5-0 and oh in Swiss. With this, with his team, ladies and gentlemen, it was an absolutely incredible run for him. And you know how we were talking about Raging Bolt and going, you know, 50% usage at this tournament? Mm -hmm. And we were talking about how Fluttermane got dethroned from number one? Well, Landon says, you know what? I don't care that Raging Bolt is number one. I'm bringing Fluttermane. <laughs> I'm bringing the Flutter yep. on this one. He he loves the Flutter, and he's been he's been definitely doing adjustments to the team since I've known him personally. And the fact that he's brought in, bringing the Flutter is going to be very strong going against Elijah's team, unless he goes against that Sneasler. That Sneasler could do a lot of pressure into that Flutter. But he does have that Arcaladon, which... Honestly, we haven't seen a lot in most of these tournaments, and from what I've what I've seen his matchups and kind of how he plays, he uses it very correctly. But of course, he has the Tornadoes, Ogre Pond, Water, Entei, and Landers. I think this is going to be a close game. I don't really know who could actually come out on top. Honestly, I mean, 
you're, you said about our child on our child on when I saw it got revealed in the lead up to the Indigo disc. Oh, my heart was so happy. <laughs> not not because Duralina got an evolution, but because we got another Steel type. Exactly. We got, we got another yeah. Steel type, and then that Electro shot plus one. It's it's Meteor Beam, but Solar Beam in rain. Yeah, and. And look, he's got a rain setter. He has the tornadoes with the prankster and, ra and rain dance. It, basically, it's going to be very difficult for Elijah to kind of avoid the rain unless he just gets rid of that tornadoes early on. But I don't know if Land is going to allow that to happen. I, I honestly don't know either. But another thing to note about Elijah's team, his Raging Bolt. We've been seeing a lot of Raging Bolts today with Thunderclap, Dragon Pulse, Electro Web. But we've, this is the first Raging Bolt with three electric moves and no dark moves. Yeah, most of the time you would see Raging Bolt with Snarl to just kind of lower the special attack of the opposing Mons, which honestly would be favoring uh, against Landon's team. But uh, the, the Electro Web is going to make it very interesting and actually might be able to help out, especially with the Tornado setting up Tailwind. So it might actually cause a little bit more pressure to, to Landon unless, you know, Stamina comes out from the Arcaladon. Exactly. And with Entei on the field... I mean, getting that inner focus, even though they're the only fake out user on Elijah's team is going to be that Sneasler. But even then, Sneasler with Poison Touch, it could get poison on the fake out. It could get poison on the close combat. It doesn't even need to do the Dire Claw stuff and click that funny button for a 50% chance <laughs> at either a poison, paralysis, or sleep. Yeah, exactly. This is going to be really fun to look at because basically both of these players are going to have to pivot against position correctly and kind of pivot around each other in order to position them to a great end game. Exactly. And honestly, I'm just ready to get this top eight matchup underway, ladies and gentlemen. Landon Morjal and Elijah Tatum. Game number one is starting. We see Landon lead with the double genies of Tornadus and Landorus and Elijah leading with the Urshifu and the Phrygia. This is very interesting. Now, the Phrygiraf and the Urshifu side on Elijah's side kind of is a, uh, is very interesting in the sense of now with the Phrygiraf having helping hand, it might cause a lot. It might incre increase the pressure that Urshifu gives out. However, with the double genie, I don't really know what Lan is trying to achieve with this, especially now that, you know, I don't think Lan is going get, to get a knockout on either Urshifu or that Phrygiraf. I think you're right on that side, but also it's important to note that Urshifu is carrying Ice Punch. Ooh, yeah. That is actually really good against both the Tornadus and the Landorus. Yeah, exactly. He goes for the Wicked Blow onto the Landorus, does a hefty amount of damage, but goes for the Substitute, barely gets it onto the stage, and now Lando's behind that cute little plushie. And Bleak Tornadus going for the Bleak One Storm. It misses. It misses the Urshifu, but it hits the Ferrigiraf. And Feridrev goes for the Trick Room, and the Trick Room is now twisting those dimensions, and now the Feridrev is going to be the fastest Pokemon on the field. This is actually very good positioning for Elijah, because now with Hyper Voice, he could just basically just get rid of that, like go through that substitute and kill that Lander. Is Land is actually going to be a very difficult position right now. You are correct on that side, Jonathan, because we saw it earlier, the Hyper Voice strategies between Zachary Likewig and William Lazda. They were going off on the Hyper Voices through the Substitutes, and that was helping out. Um, and then William was able to play around the Substitute with the Sylveon. Mm -hmm. We do see a Substitute with a Protect. The Hyper Voice comes out on the side of Elijah's Feridrev, doing a little bit of damage to the Tornadus here. A Bleak One Storm comes out, and Raging Bolt avoids the <laughs> attack. But the Feridrev just keeps taking damage. Yeah, Feridrev keeps taking damage, but that's one of the downsides of Bleak Wind Storm, just having that 80% accuracy. You know, it missed it on the Urshifu, would really would have helped out a lot, and missed it on the Raging Bolt, which didn't really matter as much because it's running that Assault Vest, but still, not being able to do, do a little bit of chip damage into the other Mons is going to do in Detrimental. And now we're seeing the Terra come out from land inside, and it's going to be into... Onto the Tornadus here, and the Tornadus, literally every one of these Pokemon today, they're playing Halloween in March <laughs> with, the, with the axe in the head. They're, they're, they're playing axe in the head. They're just trying to be that. Goes for the double protect. He doesn't and get it. And it fails, and it fails the double protect. The Hyper Voice comes out here, and the Landorus is going to go down. Oh, no. I mean, he took a gamble with it, and it didn't pay off. Lando's going to be going out to the field, Raging Bolt with the Thunderbolt into it. I don't think it's going to do a lot of damage. It oh. almost knocks out the Bleak Wind Storm, finally gets that double hit, and the Phrygiraf <laughs> finally goes down to the Bleak Wind Storm. You know what? Both of you took them on. I think, you know, Landon kind of knew, you know, taking the risk with that uh, double protect it wasn't going to work out. But getting rid of that Phrygiraf is actually going to be very beneficial for him. Now, for the fact that the moment Trick Room ends, 
it's good. He's able to just set up that tailwind and just go ham. Ente comes out. Ente comes out on the side of Landon, and Sylveon comes out on the side of Elijah here. Now, in Trick Room, the Raging Bolt and that uh, Sylveon are going to be the fastest Pokemon on the field. And the Entei, normally I've been seeing Entei, and especially with me, I ran it with the Assault Vest set. This one's a Citrus Berry set, so... It's a little bit bulky. I mean, Entei coming out to the field is going to do a lot more pressure to Raging Bolt because I've, it has the Stomping Tantrum, so it's going to do a lot. But Elisha still has that Terra. I don't really know if he's going to try to bait it out or not. The Tornadus ends up going for the Protect here to try to stall out one more turn of this Trick Room. As Entei also going for a Protect here. I think I like that play right there on Landon. So I get that double protect and at least uh, take one extra turn of Trick Room, which makes it easier for him now that the Ferrigiraf is gone and mm -hmm. Trick Room can't go back up again. Oh, yeah. Plus, you're also able to just kind of scout out which moves are going to go where and who's attacking what. And it seems like Thunderbolt's going to go into that Entei slot. Yeah, that kind of makes a lot of sense. But I think now Elijah should probably start figuring out how to get rid of this torn because the moment Trick Room goes up, it's gonna that tailwind's gonna be a little bit um, important for that later. And we see Sylveon go for the pixelate hyper voice and knocks out the tornado. So Tornadus was going for a bleak wind storm there. Interesting to not go for a rain dance or a tailwind there potentially if you have something like an Archaladon or a Ogre Pond in the back here. Mm, yeah, but I don't. Uh, he probably would have done that, but I don't think he does. He might have Flutter in the back. There's no other reason for him not to have gone for that rain dance like you said. We're going to find out, though, what his last mon is after the Sacred File into... Oh, it's oh, a, and a crit. critical hit! And, and the, the burn! burn. And uh, the, the critical hit and the burn. Now, the burn was a 50% chance to happen. It's a coin flip, yeah. It's, it's a coin flip on that, but it's still, like, you get the crit and the burn. Yeah. Like, that, that's just any insult on top of injury. <laughs> and, and I was right, yeah. And it was Fluttermane in the back, but Trick Room is gone. So now, this Fluttermane is essentially the fastest Pokemon on the field, and the Entei follow suit yeah honestly i think it this is this is actually better still so better positioning in the favor of elijah just because of, with uh, with the terra he could just terra fairy his raging bull take neutral damage from flutter and just overall be able to take a hit especially with urshi still in the back now i'm pretty sure with that scarf it might be actually have enough speed to kind of uh outspeed this flutter since it's choice specs and also i believe because tornanus went down these are the last two pokemon on land inside so an uh, electro web lowering the speed and suddenly that urshifu is going to be faster than the flutter main even regardless of a choice scarf boost yep i think game one this might be in favor of elijah i don't see a way atlanta to get out of this but we see a terrestrialization come out on the side of elijah the terra comes out and raging bolt is having a little bit of a love fest today <laughs> by getting the fairy wings and the heart yeah, we love to see the defensive, beautiful love heart of Terra Fairy. Get and another critical hit. Two critical hits on that Sylvia. It didn't really matter, but it's nice to see the critical hit text pop up. And we see the Choice Specs Moonblast come out. Half the amount. And Raging Bolt goes for the Thunderbolt instead. Interesting. That is actually a very interesting play right there on the side of uh, Elijah going for the Thunderbolt instead of going for the Electro Web. However... I mean, he's got two Pokemon that have priority, but they'd have to go priority into the Flutterman. If they try to prioritize the Entei, then they can't really go for their attack. Yeah, I, I think right now, we just, I think, I still, I, I don't really see a way for Lana to get out unless going for Tracy, but he doesn't. He goes blow. for the Wicked Blow into the Fluttermane, and Fluttermane will go down because, I mean, it's a Wicked Blow and it's a guaranteed critical hit, but a Sacred Fire coming out on the Entei. Doesn't do much. Oh, it gets a burn. burn. Yep, on the burn. I mean, it will do. A, it will kind of lower the damage that Wicked Blow is going to do to it, but I don't think it's really going to matter. Thunderbolt will not take it out, but it's, it definitely seems like in favor for Elijah for game one. It does look that way, but Entei might still have a chance here against uh, Elijah, but Entei going for the extreme speed. However, the uh, Urshifu was locked in a Wicked Blow, so mm -hmm. essentially it was still going to hit no matter what. It didn't have, didn't have to worry about Sucker Punch mind games Jonathan as Elijah takes game number one against our number one seed yeah I mean honestly I think Elijah played really well just not really burning that terror early on and just kind of pivoting around what um Landon team wants to do which is basically set up the tailwind set up rain possibly allow 
you know, just mons to destroy itself. But obviously, it didn't have the Air Caladon. It didn't have the Ogre Pond to take care of that. So, it just overall, I think Landon might have been using this game one and just kind of scout out what Elijah plans is, what his possible leads going in. So, game two, he can counteract that and just put um, possibly put him to a game three where he could take it home. I think you're pro I think you're right on that one because when we saw in game number one, Landorus took that much damage from the Wicked Blow, and then the substitute comes out, and it's essentially it doesn't matter what hit it's gonna what's gonna happen next, it's gonna go down. Adding insult to injury is the fact that Feridraf has hyper voice and sound based moves mm -hmm. go through the substitute. Doesn't have to worry about something like an infiltrator on a random dragapult that may or may not have been used by somebody <laughs> at the Pittsburgh Regionals back in September, but we don't talk about it. <laughs> we, we we don't talk about Pittsburgh. Yeah. Anymore. I mean now looking into game two, let's I think I think Arcadon actually comes in for a fact, because if he if Landon truly believes that Feridraf is gonna come in again with the Urshifu, then I think Arcadon could just take a lot of pressure from it and just kind of build up a little bit of his stamina and put a heavy amount of pressure up to Elisha's side. Exactly right. And I mean, while Wicked Blow is a tech is technically a better move on an Archaladon as opposed to Surging Strikes, the Wicked Blow, I mean, it's going to hurt whether Archaladon is a Grass type as its Terra type or if it's Steel and Dragon type. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to figure that out once the match starts pretty much very soon. But overall, uh, do we think Elijah's going to lead with the same Mons? Actually, we're going to find out. As Landon leads with a little bit of a switch up here, he leads the Flutterman and the Ogre Pond, and Elijah leads with the same. He leads with the Urshifu and the Farigerath. That's very interesting with the Flutter on Landon's side. Honestly, this is going to be possibly might cause pre uh, pressure for Landon uh, to Elijah to either burn that Terra onto the Urshifu to turn into Terra Poison or make it swap out. Which, honestly, I don't really know what Landon can't possibly wants to do with that. I think you're right on that side because when we look at this, we see the oh. we see a switch out on Landon's side. He switches out Fluttermane here and brings in Entei. Interesting. I I honestly don't know. Wicked blow into that slot. Yeah, makes sense. Oh, over over 50%, but that brings it into Citrus Berry range. So now Entei will be able to take another one as long as Feridraf doesn't go for a move. I... I don't think we're going to find out what the Furgraph goes, but it goes to the Ivy Culture, goes into that Urshifu slot, does a lot. Trick Room gets set up. Trick Room, once again, is set up on the side of Elijah. The dimensions have been twisted, but again, the Urshifu is now the fastest Pokemon on the field mm -hmm. by virtue of that Choice Scarf. It normally would have been Ogre Pond that's the fastest Pokemon, but because of the uh, Choice Scarf, it's now the fastest Pokemon. Yeah, this is just... Landon has to figure out now what kind of positioning he wants to do. Seems like Elijah might be considering switching out, but honestly, they have the follow me coming in with the Ogre Pond, so he could just redirect that damage and try to fish out a little bit of a burn onto that Urshifu so Wicked Bull doesn't do as much. But either way, that Hyper Voice onto the Furigraph side is going to do a lot. As we do see a switch out coming out on the side of Elijah, his Urshifu is taking a break, and in comes the Raging Bolt. And... The Feridraf going for the Hyper Voice, a good amount of, a mm -hmm. little bit of damage, but there, you said it, the Sacred Fire into that slot. Doesn't get the burn. Horn Leech into that Feridraf slot, and honestly, a little bit of chip damage. It's not bad, but still, land. it's not in a great position. Now with Raging Bolt out on the field, it could just basically just Thunderbolt that slot and just cause so much pressure and just almost basically knock out that Ogre Pond. I don't really know what Landon could do here. I honestly am trying to think of it myself. Now, he does have protect on his Entei and he does have spiky shield on the Ogre Pond so he could technically uh, prevent one more turn of Trick Room from going up mm -hmm. or he could just go a little aggressive and try to go and take out that Feridraf because as we saw it's got the Rocky Helmet so while he got health back he took damage by virtue of the Rocky Helmet. No, Oh spiky shield comes out protecting that Ogre Pond that is a very smart play coming out. Hyper Voice coming out onto that on uh, onto both Entei and Ogre Pond obviously it's protected. Oh, that does a lot. That does and Raging Bolt went for the Thunderbolt. Oh, the, the read! Entei. The double up into the Entei, and Entei goes down. Damn. Elijah is not letting his guard down. Just because he had 8C does not mean he is not a threat. He is putting, he is showcasing why he's up on this top eight. And honestly, this is going to be very strong for him. Yes, and now the Fluttermane comes in. Fluttermane is going to be the fastest Pokemon on the field, guaranteed now, because mm -hmm. it is it is definitely Trick Room, and the Urshifu is in the back for Elijah. However, it still doesn't want to take any hits from this Fluttermane. It's a Choice Specs Fluttermane, 
but a Terra on something like the Raging Bolt, and suddenly that Ivy Cudgel turns from a resist to a neutral hit. Yeah, honestly, that is just more of a mind game of whether or not um, it, the Rage, uh, Terra Fairy does go on to Raging Bolt, and if Landon's able to read that, could he actually be able to knock out that Raging? Because if he does, he might be, it might be able to put him in a better spot in the, for this end game coming up. I think you're right there, Jonathan, but we do see Elijah is activating his Terra Orb once again, and he is firing it at Raging Bolt. It's a love fest. There's the, hearts the Terra. Are out. The hearts are out, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> as the Terra Fairy Raging Bolt makes its appearance once again. Now we're going to have to see. Oh, Ooh, we see a terrestrialization option on Landon's side as well. More hearts? More and hearts. More, more hearts. More hearts. Fluttermain said, Raging Bolt, you are from the past much like I am. We can't let you have the only heart. <laughs> I need a heart too. Damn, Val uh, Valentine's Day was like almost a month ago. Yeah, we're still showing the love out here. Psychic going into that Fluttermain slot. Not doing the, a hefty amount. And the Thunderbolt as well. Oh, Ooh, that is big damage. The Ivy Cudgel goes into the Ferrigerev and it does not knock it out. But the choice specs dazzling gleam. That might take care of that for Rigorath and do a hefty amount into that Raging Bolt. Ooh, that is big damage into the Ferrigerev and the Raging Bolt. But the Ferrigerev ends up going down. And now, with one turn left of Trick Room, it could it could literally go any which way now, Jonathan. Yeah, I think honestly it could go any which way, and especially since I don't think we've seen Landon's last mon. I think you're right. I mean, it's the last turn of Trick Room here. The Raging Bolt is the Raging Bolt and Sylveon are the slowest Pokemon on the field. And Sylveon with Hyper Voice, it's going to affect the Flutter main, even if it wasn't terrestrialized into a Fairy type because of Pixelate turning that mm -hmm. normal move into a Fairy move. Yeah, so no matter what, it's still going to be doing that stab of uh, fairy, fairy damage into both of these Mons. I think, I wonder what's going to be happening up at the turn. I know Elijah was kind of hovering over that Yawn, trying to put a little bit of pressure into that Ogre Pond to possibly either swap out or go to sleep. But... Counters, timer's going down in less than 10 seconds. Elijah's going to have to make a move. I, Hyper Voice is going to be definitely... Mm, okay, to... we're, we see this happen. We're seeing a little bit here. We see the Hyper Voice come out into the Flutter Main, and it knocks it out. That is a, that's a Pixie Plate Pixelate boosted Hyper Voice. Oh, the damage into that. Oh, what damage into the Ogre Pond. And now the Dragon Pulse will go into the Ogre Pond, and that might knock out the Ogre Pond here. It definitely will. And now... Oh, it is now a 3v1 on the side of Landon versus... Elijah with the dimensions return to normal. So now whatever Pokemon Landon has in the back is the fastest Pokemon. And Lander it's Lander is. Lander is. Oh, oh. I mean, Terra has been burned. There's nothing really a lot, uh, Landon could do here. If it was that Terra poison, he might be able to still kind of take up most of the damage from both Raging Bolt and that Sylveon. But I, I think this might be possibly just endgame for Landon. I think his run's done. It's looking unlikely here, but the Lander is going for the Sludge Bomb into the Raging Bolt and knocking it out. That's actually a big play. That's, on, yeah. That's a big play on Landon's side because now if Sylveon goes for that yawn like we predict it's going to, which it does, it, does. it might go for protecting to make sure Landorus goes to sleep. But Urshifu, choice scarf. It's the fastest Pokemon. Oh, I just... Let's, let's, I just, Land, Land does not have chance to your store, so he can't even try to attempt to go for both of the Mons, hoping to possibly fish out a crit. But I think uh, Landon's best choice right now is to just kind of kill that, that Urshifu and just hope that he can live long enough for the Landers to come back onto the play and then go for the Sludge Bomb again. I think you're right there, but we see the Sylveon goes for the Protect mm -hmm. here. And now this Choice Scarf, Urshifu, what did it lock into? It locked itself into Ice the Ice Punch. punch. We get to see move. it. It's a one-hit knockout. Oh, my God. We love to see what a one-hit knockout. What an upset. Our number eight seed, Elijah Tatum, has defeated the undefeated Lana Morgel in the top cut. I was – that was a very good match to see. Honestly, the, we're, the underdog came on top, knocking – like you said, knocking out a number one seed. Honestly, I think Elijah played great. His positioning, his thought process, just overall, every single move was very calculated into it. Uh, you are correct on that one, dude. I mean, Elijah just played that immensely well throughout this entire battle. Getting those Trick Room turns and playing them exactly the way you need to play Trick Room. Mm -hmm. And he didn't even bring Sneasler or Ogre Pond to this. Didn't even need it. That, 
honestly, that's really impressive. And honestly, Landon didn't bring the Arcaladon, which I don't think really would have favored much into this matchup, but still. It, it might have helped with the Sylveon with the Flash Cannon potentially, but even then, like. We can't, re we don't really know. We can't go through an alternate timeline and find that out. No, we, we, we can't. I mean, that was just an amazing game by Elijah being able to beat our number one seed 2-0. That's, yeah, honestly, not, I would have loved to have gone to go to game three because we always love matches going the distance, but I, still. I've, I've always maintained that the best sets go three games. It doesn't even matter if you get lucky and get mm -hmm. like me, like a, a lucky flinch or a, a random critical hit or whatever. The best sets always go three games because at least then you know that each of you guys got a game and then you have to play that essentially the winner take all game. yeah both players just pushing each other to the distance up to the game three where literally everything's on the line nothing like both players have to give it their all in order to have a chance to win exactly and whatever happens in that game three okay because as we i mean we have riley factura here we all saw what happened in game three at the pittsburgh regionals with wolf he gets that critical hit on the Cresselia with the ice beam into the landers and it's mm -hmm. not only a critical hit it gets the freeze yep exactly you know game three just does a lot and honestly we we still have you know, two more rounds going into this we have our top four and then obviously our top two so we might see a game game three hopefully it's very possible that we'll see a game <laughs> three here but congratulations to elijah tatum our number eight seed defeating our number one seed. And in all fairness, I think that actually plays into how it was uh, back in October when we had our first premiere challenge here at Nerdy Needs. Uh, either I was number eight or I was number seven. I forget what I was. I'd have to, I'd have to go back to the archives on that one. But I ended up winning the first uh, Nerdy Needs premiere challenge here. Really? And I honestly cannot remember if I was the seventh seed or the eighth seed. I remember I needed uh, a critical hit hyper voice in game three to win. And I got that critical hit hyper voice to win. <laughs> and I didn't get out of here until 2 a.m. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah, I, I didn't get out of here until 2 a.m. That's why Premier Challenge is now here at best of one and the best of three. Because yeah. nobody wants to be here until 2 a.m. again. Well, I mean, I would. I mean, it's Pokemon. We love doing this. We love playing the game. Like it, it, It's a shame we couldn't push it to 3 a.m. Because <laughs> then, who wants a Krammy Penny at 3 in the morning? <laughs> oh, boy, 3 a.m. Go on, you uh, I love that. I love that video. I always see it on my timeline at 3 a.m. whenever I'm just it, doing my own thing. It, it's perfect. It's really it, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. But ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to be back with our top four matchups. So stick around for the Nerdy Needs Midseason Showdown.